would be to set up a planetary government ruled by a new bank of the world. A bank of the world owned and controlled by them. Suddenly, hundreds of prominent publications announce the solution, the people's only salvation. Time magazine, in an article titled The New World Order, said that the new super bank would control the world's currencies and set interest rates, and that the new bank would, quote, knock the heads of bad countries like the United States. At a meeting of central bank heads and finance ministers dubbed Bretton Woods II, the plan for world government was unveiled by the very bankers that had engineered the collapse. Formerly sovereign countries would now pay their taxes directly to the banking cartel. Hundreds of new carbon taxes controlling every facet of human activity would only be the beginning. Now all the elite had to do was to sell the public on accepting the final phase of their takeover. And it's Obama's job to sucker the public into standing down so the banker's agenda can move forward unhindered. Never before in U.S. history has the media gotten behind a president like they are behind Obama. The press has pulled out all the stops, bestowing a crown of infallibility upon Obama as the savior of the people, the elite are betting everything they've got on Obama's charisma and hoping that he can sell the world on their program of tyranny. Yes, there have been differences between America and Europe. No doubt there will be differences in the future. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. In truth, Obama is not simply continuing George W. Bush's policies. He is radically expanding them. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. This film has documented the painful fact that Barack Obama's agenda is the complete opposite of what he has claimed it to be. Now we will reveal what Barack Obama and his controllers' true agenda is. Number one, bring the United States under the complete regulatory control of a private offshore super bank known as the Bank of the World. More than a hundred new taxes are now being developed under the umbrella of curbing greenhouse gases. The new taxes will be paid directly to the private bank consortium. At the producer level, taxes will be paid on farm animals flatulence. At the consumer level, there will be carbon taxes on all forms of meat, beef, poultry, pork and fish. All cars will be fitted with satellite tracking boxes that will tax driving by the mile and an added tax will be placed on all fossil fuels, including motor oil and natural gas. All plastic products will have a carbon tax added. Outdoor space heaters and fireplaces are to be taxed. All electricity produced by coal-powered plants will be taxed. Under the cap-and-trade system, citizens will be forced to pay taxes on thousands of products to private cap-and-trade services owned by Al Gore and other elitists. There will be taxes on light bulbs, water, trash pickup, air travel, train travel, bus, ship, medicine, steel production, mining, clothing, laundry, asphalt are just a few of the new taxes to be levied. But to truly transform our economy, to protect our security and save our planet from the ravages of climate change, we need to ultimately make clean, renewable energy the profitable kind of energy. So I ask this Congress to send me legislation that places a market-based cap on carbon pollution and drives the production of more renewable energy in America. That's what we need.